In the last lesson I showed you how to create your own version of a basic two-dimensional array. Now there are some differences between what we did in the last lesson and how a real two-dimensional array is actually laid out in memory. In our last lesson we created a string of text that basically consisted of three words and this is our pseudo two-dimensional array. If we look at how this is laid out in memory, it looks like this. Like you see here, where each word is immediately stored one after the other in memory. But when you think of a real two-dimensional array, like let's say we're thinking of an array that is three by three, then you're more or less thinking of something that looks like this. where you have three rows and three columns. Now we've already discussed that inside of your computer there is no such thing as two-dimensional RAM. Every array, whether it's one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or any other kind of dimensional array, it will still be stored as if it was a one-dimensional array. It'll just be each array one after the other in memory in a single linear fashion. But because our goal is to represent a data structure the way we think of it in our own mind, we need to think of an array as being rectangular. So if we look at this three word example and I try to place it into a grid layout like this, and just for the sake of this lesson I'm going to represent the null character as just being a zero, just so that everything lines up a little nicer. You'll see the problem that we have here is that our array is not the same size for each element. We should really end it here. So to truly think of this as an array the way we think of an array, we would think of it as having three rows, six columns. That means that we need to add extra characters, extra bytes, for the two rows that are not large enough. So just for the sake of this lesson we'll go ahead and set those two null characters. And now we have a proper representation of a true two-dimensional array. So we're going to have the word 1 followed by three null termination characters, the word 2 followed by three null termination characters, and the word 3 is still only going to be followed by a single null termination character. So the way that this is going to look in memory is like this. So this is how the string of text is now stored in memory. By doing it this way we are guaranteeing that each array is the same size and that will make locating specific array elements easier. Now let's start by using the printf function to print string as it exists right now. And you'll notice that it prints the word 1 like we would expect because it's going to start at the O and then when it reaches the null termination character of course it's going to stop. So if we want to move to the word 2 again we're just going to use the offset that we did before. This is offset 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we were to use the offset 6, we print the word 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and if we use the offset 12, we're going to print the word 3. The difference between this and the last lesson is that because each array has the same size, we can specify which word we want as simply being a multiple of six because our largest element is six characters. So if we want the first word, we can say six times zero, and that will print the word one. If we want the second word, we can say six times one, which will print the word 2 because this starts at array index 6 and if we want the third word we can say 6 times 2. 
So for example, if we wanted to print the word 2 using this syntax, we can do it like this. And you see that it prints the word 2. Now I want you to notice this correlation. Here we're looking at the first word, which is 1. Here we're looking at the second word, which is 2. And here we're looking at the third word, which is 3. Notice that the only difference here is the multiple of 6. Each array inside of our two-dimensional array is exactly 6 bytes, 6 characters in size, and so the multiple of 6 will determine which one-dimensional array inside our two-dimensional array we're actually going to look at. Now let's go ahead and lay this out the way we would actually think of it as a two-dimensional array. Now if we were thinking of this in terms of rows and columns, we could say this. We could say that our first row is row 0. Now why 0 instead of 1? Because again, if we don't have any offset, we're looking at the very first element automatically. So row 0 is the first row, row 1 would be the second row, and row 2 would be the third row. So in effect what we can say here is that row 0 is equal to 1. Of course it has three null termination characters. Row 1 is equal to 2, and row 2 is equal to 3, like so. Now just like we can think of this as having rows, we can also think of it as having columns. We would say this is column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. A total of 6 columns, or 6 characters. So if we had our array laid out like this, and we wanted to print the word 2, we could theoretically call something like this. Now of course we can't do that yet, but I'll show you how in the next lesson. Now what if we wanted to print a specific character, like let's say we wanted to print the n in 1. Well in this case we're going to want row 0, we're going to want character 1, remember character 0 would be the very first character which is the o in 1, and last we'd want to say percent %c to specify that it was going to be a character. Now keep in mind that this is not valid C code yet. We'll get into exactly how to do that in the next lesson. But I want you to understand the basic idea of using the bracket to reference the specific array that you want and then using a second set of brackets to represent the element inside that array that you want. So in this lesson I've shown you the basics of how a two-dimensional array is laid out in memory and how you can use the bracket notation to reference specific array elements. We'll get into that more in later lessons. In the next lesson I'll show you how a three-dimensional array works and then I'll show you how to actually create arrays in C. If you have any questions feel free to ask and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.